Alrighty y'all, welcome to part two of my build along knife. I want to start off by saying that we judges are humbled and excited with the amount of viewer turnout for this build along challenge. Remember that submissions are due by November 27th. Send the best picture of your build along knife to knifebuildalong at gmail.com along with details on why you should be judged in either the novice or overall category. We're taking these classifications on a case by case basis and are relying mostly on the honor system. For this challenge, we'll be sending prizes to United States addresses only. However, we still encourage others to participate for the fun of it. Speaking of prizes, we have added a few sponsors and items, so I'll briefly go through some of the highlights. For both winners, we are having layout kits from Little Machine Shop, gift cards from Maritime Knife Supply, the Royer Beginner Bladesmith course, and some specialty handle material from Brian Cohn. In addition, the overall winner will be getting a disc grinder chassis kit from Bex Armory, a 9-inch disc from TR Maker, a Sanding Buddy Radius sanding stick from Kyle Daly, and a curved 2x72 Platin and hot stamping hardy jig from DIY Europe. The novice winner will also be receiving flat G10 sanding sticks from Kyle Daly. Once again, we're super stoked y'all are having fun with this project, and with that, I'll jump into the narration of my build along knife. What y'all saw me doing during the intro was relieving the profile of my handle scales to expose the tang all the way around. I really like this look, and if done right, it can feel really nice in the hand. Alrighty, so this is where we're at. I really like how it's looking from the profile here. We have about 60 or so thousandths of an inch of a relief on the handle scales versus the spine. I think that's a pretty slick look. If you look at it from the top, we've been able to uh, shape the sides of the handle kind of in an oval uh, shape if you're looking at it from the front. On the bottom, we haven't been able to get this corner knocked off as easily on the flat platen, but I do have a little bit of rounding done on the bottom of the handle, but there's still, there's still an edge right here that I need to take off. I think I'm gonna take it off on the hand sanding bench just so I don't mess it up on the grinder. The grinder moves stuff really fast and the last thing I wanna do is mess up at this point. I will note that the edge coming across the top here because there is an edge here, doesn't really feel bad in the hand. Like I don't notice that edge at all. I think it's because it's so small and it's close to this raised spine. So I'm gonna leave that where it's at cause I kinda, I kinda like it to be honest. I like that edge right there. So I'm gonna leave that alone. Uh, very, very unnoticeable in the hand. Actually don't feel it at all. So, and I think it looks cooler. On the back, I'm going to knock this corner down. I'm not gonna knock it down and round it over too much, but I am gonna knock it down a little bit because it feels a little sharp. So all in all, I think we're gonna finish this guy out on the hand sanding bench. In order to hand sand these scales, I decided to make a little jig. This jig will allow me to manipulate the scales in multiple orientations during the hand sanding without the actual knife tang in the way. I brought the scales up to a 1000 grit finish and flattened them on my disc grinder. 
I picked up this tip from an old Walter Sorrells video where he placed his scale on the disc grinder before turning it on. Obviously use caution when attempting this. This is the first time I've tried it and the results were good. The next thing I wanted to do was buff the handles. To do this, I finally bit the bullet and bought a buffer. I think I will eventually do a review on this machine since it's perfect for what I do in my shop and was the cheapest one I could find online. I'll put some affiliate links to this buffer in the video description below. With the buffed handles, I went ahead and ground in my edge bevels with my water sharpener. I did this at this point so that I can avoid scratching my stone wash finish once it's done. I tumbled the knife for around 20 minutes and gotta say that this stone washing looks awesome with a coat of oil on it. I then sharpened and stropped the edge. When assembling the knife, I applied some blue Loctite onto the threads and then torqued them to 15 inch pounds. At this point, the knife itself is done and I can move on to the leather sheath. I'll put a link to the sheath template in the description below if y'all want to make the pouch sheath for your build along knife. Just note that since I went with an exposed hang, the sheath had to be a little smaller to fit right. I ended up making two sheaths for this knife, the first one being a little too big. Many of y'all probably saw my laser review for this X-Tool 20 watt CNC laser. It's been doing a darn good job and I'm happy to have it around for sure. It really does shine with leather work and it's nice to have a precise template because that goes a long way in leather craft. This basket weave stamp is nice and deep, and it took me a while to find a good one for a reasonable price. I think this one came from Japan. I know I mentioned a lot of items in my narrations, and I wanted to say that I do for a couple of reasons. First of all, it took me a while to find and test some of these items, and I figured it would help new makers to list out the products I know are good. And secondly, most of the links for these items in my descriptions are affiliate links, and the channel does get compensated 
when the items are purchased through them. I feel like this is fair and I strive to never violate your trust as viewers, meaning I won't recommend garbage products as a rule. So as you can see here, I'm using a needle in my mini mill to puncture holes in the sheath and then I'm saddle stitching the belt loop. Once the belt loop is stitched, it's time to fold the sheath and glue in the welt. With the sheath being perfectly cut on the laser, this part of the process is very easy since I know both sides are spot on symmetrical. Once we're finished up, I'll put a coat of Neat's Foot Oil on the sheath and use a heat gun to soak it in. I then apply a layer of bag coat. So this is how the sheath turned out. All in all, I'm pretty happy with it, however, there are some issues. First of all, it's a little loose on the knife. If my scales were full height, I think I would be fine, but with the exposed tang construction, it needed to be a little smaller, the sheath that is. Second of all, I had some stitching troubles at the top of the welt, which I corrected in a crude manner. For these reasons, I decided to remake the sheath. When I do sell this knife, I'll include both of the sheaths so that the buyer can choose which one they want to use. Alrighty, here is my finished build along knife and sheath. I had a ton of fun making this knife along with the community, and I hope everyone the best of luck in the challenge. Make sure y'all go check out the other judges' builds today and our generous sponsors' websites. If y'all enjoyed this build, smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. If you want to support Redbeard Ops, you can do so via Patreon. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.